And you got your little diamond dog necklace on. <laughs> uh, no, it's my initial D. And um, somebody did ask me one time, are you from Detroit? <laughs> it and I was does like, look oh like a God, Detroit. Doesn't it? It looks tigers, like. Tigers uh, yeah. D. So if you're watching on um, YouTube, I have a black diamond necklace that is my initial D that can substitute for, what's it, the Detroit Lions? Tigers. Tigers. The baseball team. Yeah. But it really is D for Denise. Mm-hmm. And today it's L for Litchfield, Connecticut. So let's get into this right now. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Hey listeners, ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. What's up, All-Stars? Welcome back to another episode of Skip Town All-Stars. How you doing, Trixie? I'm doing great. How are things? Things are going really well. Yeah? Yeah. Doing all right? Uh-huh. You're smiling. You're in a good mood. I smile all the time. I'm always in a good mood. Me too. No, you are never in a good mood. Oh my God. <laughs> and as you've gotten older, you are so unbearable at times. What? Yeah, yeah. You've definitely turned into old, angry white guy. <gasps> you know... You have not huffed in a while, though. <laughs> you're, you're really good. Like, when I say something bothers me, you definitely work on it. So what have you been doing in substitution of huffing? Uh, you know, I've been working. I'm doing some manifestation work and uh, some TM. What's TM? As kids like to call it transcendental meditation. Yeah. So whenever you say something to me that makes me want to huff, I actually transport myself somewhere else now. Where are you? Nirvana. What does that look like? It looks like it's just quiet and I'm not in trouble. You're never in trouble. That's what paradise looks no, like. You're no, I, why would you be in trouble? Like, you almost quit the show a couple weeks ago. Well, that was on just because. 100th you, episode Eve. Like, are we really doing this right now? Well, you were huffing and puffing and you weren't in trouble. You just oh, get, I was you in trouble easily of losing get annoyed. my producer and my co host. <laughs> okay, that might have been trouble for you, but you weren't like in just, trouble like a know, kid. We, we had to go visit HR. <laughs> <laughs> we did because you had like, you had a, like, what do you call it? A meltdown in the office. As I've been known to do occasionally. <laughs> yeah, I'm we, an artist. <laughs> I suffer. And then that makes me suffer. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm going to leave all of that there for the moment. Uh, let's just say if you are watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're listening to us on Spotify, please give us a rating and always give us a review on Apple Podcasts. If you would be so kind, we really appreciate all the interaction we have from our listeners. And those little things, those little buttons and tabs that you push go a long way toward fueling the Skip Town All-Stars train. There you go. Without further ado, we had the privilege of being in Litchfield, Connecticut. Uh, when we were visiting Connecticut, Ellie's, one of Ellie's college friends yeah. said, oh, if your parents are doing a travel podcast, make sure they check out Litchfield. So that's how we found out about this little town in uh, western Connecticut. It's a small little town. It is a small little town. Uh, let's talk about Litchfield, Connecticut real quick before mm -hmm. we get into our particular visit uh, population around 1,300 residents, or if you include the borough of Bantam, East Litchfield, Milton, and Northfield, which all sort of comprise that area, it's around 8,000 residents. Yeah, but 1,300 for just that town, that's really tiny. That's smaller than where you grew up, and you grew up in a small town. I did. So this is legit small town. Downtown Litchfield is pretty small. It, it is, is really, yes, agreed. It's small. It's yes. quaint and it's colonial, as we will discuss, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's small. What's that like saying, like, um, a one horse town or a one stop sign town. What is that? Like a one, one... stop light town? Yes, one stop light town. Like it, it... Litchfield has like four stop lights, if I remember. Hmm. Okay, three too many. Go ahead. There you go. Uh, median household income is around $120,000 a year. So for that small amount of people, they they're are making, making some money. They really are. Goodness. Litchfieldians like their dollars. They do. Uh, median home price is around $400,000. Yeah, not cheap. No, it's not cheap. We actually went to look at one while we were there. I yes. remember it was 640K. Yeah. 
It was big, it was nice, had a great yard, almost an acre if I remember, not quite. And two days later, it was sold. Uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> so, somebody uh, is loving life in the house that we thought we were going to maybe look at mm -hmm. in Litchfield. Yeah. Um, moving on, 73% white, 8% Asian, 8% mm -hmm. black, mm -hmm. 5 or 6% Hispanic, and then, you know, all the rest. Um, so that's kind of the breakdown there. Average temps aren't bad generally speaking. Uh, summer, it's 70 degrees, nice and pleasant. Very. Uh, but the problem is in winter, the average temperature is 27 degrees. That's pretty cold. It was pretty cold when we were there oh, too, yeah, that morning was... that we drove in there. Oh my I God. thought I was going to slip and fall. Yeah. There was black ice. There I remember was... you warned me about black. <laughs> There's a lot of black ice. You need to slow down. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh-huh. That was me. Clearly we made it. Uh, 50 inches of precipitation in Litchfield. That's a lot wow. of snow and rain. Yeah, that really is. Oh my gosh. Everyone's yeah. hair must just be like frizzy and wet all the time. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, and as we said, the houses in you downtown. You know when we went? It was snowing. Do you remember? It, yeah. Like when we, when we got there, it wasn't snowing. But then when we ended up, like, because you spent some time there, yeah. it was snowing. Yeah. yeah. We caught about half an inch of that uh -huh. precipitation yeah. for uh -huh. sure. Uh, houses in downtown buildings have the char characteristic colonial revival look that you're accustomed to seeing in the New England area. We've become quite accustomed to it. We really have, and we love yeah, it. We do. It's pretty charming. It makes me feel revolutionary. Anyway, uh, I called after our visit because, you know, it was such a small town. We spent a few hours there. Uh, then I had to go back to work and I still had questions even after looking at some of the pro We looked at about five or six houses that day, mm -hmm. if you remember, in that yeah. surrounding area. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was fortunate enough to catch a gentleman by the name of Sean. I believe his last name is Kunick, K-U-N-I-C, uh, who is the Visitor Services Coordinator at the Litchfield Historical Society. Mm -hmm. How about that? That's a lot in one single breath. It is. Very good. Yeah. But uh, Sean was an incredible source of information and was kind enough to spend a lot of time on the phone with me, sort of rounding out my information when it comes to Litchfield. Yeah, well, let's just paint the picture before we go into stats. Go like ahead. When you're driving into Litchfield, um, like getting there is exactly what you would think of a New England town, like beautiful homes lots of, um, you know, agriculture, trees. I mean, we even passed, I think, a body of water when we were headed there. There's, there's water almost everywhere, like in Connecticut, whether it's a lake, a pond, or whatever it is. So driving there, you do feel like, ooh, I'm in New England. And then when you arrive at Litchfield, um, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, it's really small. Like, there isn't a, a Main Street per se. There's like an avenue that has a beautiful green in the yeah. middle and, and both lanes of traffic north and south are divided with Do this. Do you know if it's north or I south? I don't, but I'm just okay. giving, I'm painting a, <laughs> did I not say I'm painting a picture here? I said, let's paint the picture, okay? okay. I so, just, I, you know, no, I no. smell a fact check coming on. Okay, well, Patrick will probably fact check it and say that street actually runs east and west. My point is, is that their main drag is divided um, with a square in the middle and a lot of activities happen in that square that's in the middle um, Like we learned that during the summer. There's live music there. They have cookouts there um, Kids gather during the summer for like summer camps. We learned um, But while we were there the one thing that's very noticeable is that there isn't a downtown and that was something different from the other cities we visited while we were in Connecticut. Almost every city that we went to had a really charming downtown, even if it was just two blocks. You didn't think they had a downtown? No way. They did That's not have a downtown. That's where we went, where the coffee shop was. Yeah, it wasn't downtown, stuff. though. Oh, it was just nice. on the main drag. And it was literally that just was like... It. It was That's it. all their downtown consisted of. I know. That's what I'm saying. Oh, it's okay. exactly what So I'm they saying. had one. It just uh, wasn't large at all. It, there was no main street. That's what I was getting at. But go ahead. You can continue. Okay, but yeah, they do have the oval-shaped green, as you mentioned. Uh, and well, there's not just an oval-shaped green. It's like there's two of them. Do you remember? It was cut in half. Yeah, yeah. there's I mean, a street really... that goes through the middle right. of it. It's and not like the Guilford green where no. it's just a sectioned off yeah. thing of land. There were streets going through there. Um, the... I think back in the day, it was probably started with like horses and buggies, truthfully. It yeah. feels like a horse and buggy oh, town. 100%. I mean, their main, like, I don't want to say attraction, but it's very much prominent in that little area 
is the courthouse with the um, the clock tower. Oh yeah, the clock tower. Yeah, it's really beautiful. It's like right there as you pull into, I can't say downtown, as you pull into like that little area. I don't even know what it is because it's not a legit downtown. It's like just a little area. <laughs> Okay. You're going to die on that say, hill, I see. I want to say strip mall, but it's not a strip mall. It's not a strip no, mall. But it's There's like, nothing corporate either. No, but all. like it's like this corner. It's literally a corner, and that's it. Like on the corner. Yeah, it's yeah. town. It's in town. It's not. And the though. town is very small, but, yes. It's like, <laughs> okay, you said you, it earlier, a one stop you, light town. Yeah, but if it, you literally blink, you will miss it. Like that's how, it's not even like a dress, it's not even like a down the like town, like a main street. It was very similar to where I was like, like Are we here? Where's the downtown? And you uh, said to me, Where you're standing in it. <laughs> yeah, you're standing in it. It's basically about three or four streets, I think. There's the main it's street, no. and then there's some side streets that have like the old, there's like an old hotel or something yeah, like that, but, and shops and stuff. Okay, on one no, side. like really. It was that main corner, but whatever. Okay, okay. so go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're going to visit, I have you're not, not going to yeah. be in a major street. She's basically like, go to Litchfield for two buildings. <laughs> no. it, it's like, okay, <laughs> i got to build an episode out of this somehow. Okay. No. So let me uh, <laughs> just pull this whole show out of the ashes and dust it off. Go um, ahead. We have Litch lots of good facts. Let's just move on. Litchfield History Museum just reopened in April. There's tons of info there. A new exhibit. Litchfield is just like doused in history. Okay. It is. Yes. Let's go there. Okay. Uh, and uh, in this uh, new revised museum, the reopened museum, there's an exhibit on how I found this to be a great fact. This this fact is just all about me. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, there's an exhibit on how Connecticut was instrumental in establishing the Western Reserve that later became Northeastern Ohio, it, where my hometown of Lake Milton is included. One of the crosstown rivals from my hometown is actually called Western Reserve School District. So thanks, Connecticut, for giving up a parcel of land. Are you so, serious? Yeah. So back in the day, that's crazy. What is now Ohio was sectioned off among some of the original 13 states, colonies, whatever. And so Connecticut had a claim in Northeastern Ohio, like a whole section of land. That's crazy. Yeah. Connecticut. All those states is gave so up their claim and it became the state of Ohio eventually. But the proximity of Connecticut to Ohio is- Well, Pennsylvania was in the way. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> and so Pennsylvania <laughs> was in the way. Pennsylvania had its own claim. Virginia had wow. some claim. Uh, there are other uh, states that were early in the so nation. So say that, that again. So Northeastern Ohio used to be part of Connecticut. Was actually owned by Connecticut. Yes. It is. I don't know if they would ever consider it part of Connecticut. Hmm. Was owned. They would have to attack Got Pennsylvania it. to get to it. So it was owned by Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good fact. That's Where a did cool you fact, find right? that? That's so good. Well, Sean pointed it out to me and then I just kept digging from there. I'm like, That's well, amazing. where was exactly Connecticut's portion of Western Reserve? And now there you have it. Okay. Little Jimmy's hometown. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, let's go to the history of Litchfield. Uh, the first law school in the United States, the Litchfield Law School, was established in 1784. Wow. Aaron Burr went there. Do you know, do you remember who that is? I didn't pay You're much. You're not, no. not a history you, fan. You know I didn't You're pay. a Broadway fan. I am. Yeah. Hamilton. Yeah. Who shot him? Aaron Burr. Exactly. He went to Litchfield Law School. How about that? Huh. Okay. I knew the name sounded familiar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Horace Mann, who is also proclaimed oh. as the father of American education. Chicago Bulls. Also went there. Chicago Bulls. Horace. No, it's Horace Grant. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. What? This is like totally <laughs> off the rails right now. <laughs> Horace Grant. Wow. Horace Grant was fire. born in Litchfield. <laughs> Horace Grant is a vampire. He's been alive for 300 years. Wow. Okay. The Litchfield Female Academy, opened in 1792, was one of the first major educational institutions for women in the okay. United States. Ladies doing it for themselves. Yes. What year was that? Uh, 1792. Wow. Yeah. Uh, lots of American Revolution activity and lots of politicians from Litchfield. Benjamin Franklin's son was actually held prisoner in Litchfield. Are you serious? He was a loyalist. I didn't know wow. this. He, he, he was in favor of the Redcoats. 
Ben that's Franklin's amazing. kid. Isn't that crazy? That is absolutely crazy. I know. It's like random stuff I never ever knew. And now Litchfield just bringing it all out. Wow. Um, Ethan okay. Allen. Oh, the furniture maker. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, he was also a farmer there, and he went on to be a military officer that conquered Fort Ticonderoga, which was a huge win for the Revolutionary Army in the Revolutionary War. Wow. Yep. He also later founded a little place known as Vermont. Are you serious? Yeah. He was you, a, you've got to be He was be one of the founders me. of Vermont. Yeah. I never knew that. Wow. Sorry, I'm like got really in the no. weeds, but I thought some of this stuff was really fun and cool. You know what's crazy is they like went, they went like just crazy after 1776. I mean, they were like, okay, we're doing this. They did a law school. Yeah. They did an academy. I mean, they really did not fool around. Yeah. Uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe, the author of Uncle Tom's Cabin, mm -hmm. famous novel, yeah. uh, was born in Litchfield in 1811. Oh, but wow. But before that, going back to the Revolutionary War real quick, this is my favorite factoid about Litch Litchfield. This just takes stones, and I love it. Uh, the After the Declaration of Independence was signed, the statue of King George III was brought from New York to Litchfield and they melted it down into bullets to fight the war. <laughs> that's awesome. That is incredible. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's pretty so, amazing. I, I know, I geeked out on all this stuff. It's okay, that little town, you would never anticipate all of this, uh, all of these fun fact histories. So next time you're at like history, or triv history trivia, yeah. you know. You got me to thank. Uh -huh. I take Venmo. Um, Torrington, back to modern days, uh -huh. <laughs> Torrington is the latest, the, the nearest suburb near there. It's actually a, a small city. Mm -hmm. Um, you and I, did you and I go through Torrington? We did. And, uh, nowadays, as you mentioned, uh, all the things that they do around the green, they have a 4th of July pet parade. Aww. Huh? Like those little, get those little animals all decked out yeah. and like red, white, and blue. Bring out your uh, lizards and all that stuff. It's going to be fun. Put them in a wagon. You know, it on. is a small town and small towns, you know, look, you got 1,300 people there. They're going to do really cute, fun stuff. They are. Small towns. Got to love them. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't know. Do you? Because, you wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't know. But here's what I do wonder. Um, you know, like in a small community, you always have people say, Oh, I don't know. Your neighbors know everything. Oh, God. It's so true. Okay. Do, do they know everything? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. You can't get away with anything. Um, no, I mean, it's really, really hard. You have to have... Like, if you're going to do something... Okay, so let's just say my friends and I in high school one night were out, and we just were having fun, and we thought it was cool to take a baseball bat. Let's just say if this happened. Mm -hmm take a baseball bat to a bunch of mailboxes on the Get other side of, of the lake right now are you serious how long do you think that like secret lasts did it even last 24 hours no because the next uh well it did last 24 hours it, it lasted 36 hours because we did it on a saturday night and monday afternoon in football practice the cops came by to pull us out of practice what happens like in a small town? Do I the mean, police... they threatened to charge us with, you know, federal crimes and all that because, you know, it's a post office. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a post. It's, it's a, a mailbox. Yeah, yeah. You can't be messing with people's yeah. mail. Um, I think the statute of limitations is over. So I think I'm safe in saying that uh, because you... they actually couldn't prove it. Uh, they never actually, you know, we never had any charges pressed. How did they against think us it was you there. guys? Because. I don't know. Like it could have been that the town is so small that we actually hit a few of the mailboxes of our actual classmates, <laughs> no. families. No. Like not fully knowing or caring. Was you it know? in the trunk of your car? Is it no, where we, it was? we no, we literally were just knocking them off the posts and driving. You said you hid them. No, hit them. Oh, but I mean, how would they know it was you though? I think you said hid them. Because you know, somebody on Sunday calls their girlfriend and said, "Oh my God, we had so much fun." Oh no. And then the next oh. thing you know. You, you know. guys couldn't keep your mouth shut. No. Uh, somebody, loose lips, sink ships, for sure. Oh, my God. Snitches almost got stitches that day. So, anyway, we were back in football practice the next day. But, yeah, to, to your point, uh, everybody knows your business. Like, uh, my... There's pros to it, though. Because if everyone knows your business, they're going to tell you. Like, if your house is, like, <clears throat> you know, I don't know, like... I, I immediately go to like if your house is getting robbed. Like, <laughs> that's like I, I'm always like 
I don't do know if that's goes. them knowing your business necessarily. Like, I guess everyone, it is. It's like if there's pros to it. Like you always have eyes on your house. You always have eyes on your kids. Like I love that about a small town, but people are like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, it definitely, yeah. I mean, I, I was definitely raised in like, it takes a village mentality. Like all the old ladies, that. all the other moms and dads were always, it was good until, you know, I started smoking cigarettes and drinking beer at the age of 15. Oh. So, you know, you don't really want everybody to know all your business at that point. And then, you know, if you're dating somebody. Oh, everyone knows. Oh my God, everyone knows. Wait, okay, so if you go to a party, if you're dating, you know, whatever, Kathy, and then at Friday night you make out with Kathy. You Love know, you, Kathy. Go then on. you and you make out with Linda. Everyone knows by Saturday. Like everyone. Oh my God. Yeah. And this was a, the days before cell phones. So you know, people get home from the party and they'd pull that big long cord on the phone in the kitchen and they'd take it all the way into their bedroom and they'd be just by the time Monday rolled around, forget it. Everybody knew. So yeah, that part's not good. Like if you're leaning into nefarious activity, you probably don't want to be in a small town because then everybody does know your business. It's not good. That's all I'm saying. It's Jim. not always pros. Hmm. In fact, I can't think of a single time when it was pros. Like when my uh, mom decided she didn't want to be married to my dad anymore and you know, met a guy who would later become my stepfather, all the neighborhood kids were the ones telling me like, hey, I think your mom's into that dude. You know? Really? Yeah. Yeah. How did they know? They just knew. They knew. And Their they parents said something oh my God. in front of them. Oh they knew. God. They said it to me. And I was like, now, you know, all my family's dirty laundry is out on the lawn. You know what well, I mean? That's, not, that's, a, that's a downside. I can't think of a single that's good a thing downside. that comes out of everybody knowing your business. I remember when we lived in L.A. Okay, do you remember our neighbor, Mary? So <laughs> How could I forget? So um, Mary, for all you listening, I got to tell you about Mary. Um, we lived obviously in Los Angeles city and, um, we lived in the neighborhood. I appreciated the fact that Mary, um, was always around. So she was the neighborhood watch basically, or so we thought until she wasn't. So what ended up happening was, um, Mary was, Mary had some mental health issues. So, you know, you just like, I always handled her with really kick gloves because, you know, I... You were accustomed to that. You had had people in your family and mm -hmm. you had sort of experienced that from a young age. Yeah. So I knew like there's no reason, like some people were just kind of rude to her, but I never, ever was like, but what's the point? She's already had a disadvantage. So um, she lived in a house, but you know, the house was the one that like had the tin foil in the windows. Um, she had fake flowers in her front yard. Uh, but all that to say... Uh, she was always, always outside. She was either sweeping the street mm -hmm. or watering her fake flowers. She was always outside. At so, two in the morning. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Talk about get, that. I would get home from working late nights in production or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I would get out of the car and Mary would be out on the sidewalk in her robe, just pacing up and down, talking to somebody on a cell phone. Yes. Yes. So... You know, as much as people would say, oh, Crazy Mary, I was like, I love the fact that she was outside at all times because to me it was like, okay, it was like a security thing, right? Yeah, she was a sentry for the neighborhood. Yes, and she would always like, you know, because she knew like, oh, she would say to me, "We're, you know, hi, Denise. Like when I leave my house, I'm like, oh my God, I can't get away with anything because this woman <laughs> sees me coming and going at all times. <laughs> And then we had a robbery on our street. It was literally two houses down from us. And we knew for sure that Mary saw the car, got the license plate, got a description. So the first place the neighbors went to was Mary's house. They're like, what did you see, Mary? Tell us. No, Mary wasn't home that day. Oh my gosh. Mary, remember that? Mary, yeah, she went out square dancing or something yeah, that day. Yeah, Mary wasn't home that day. Sad. Yeah. Right. I remember... Um, when uh like sometimes you know i would ask mary what she like i'd want to go grocery shopping for her because i i don't know i just i knew she probably wasn't eating well so i told her one time why don't you give me a list of like all the things you want and i'm going to go to the store and i'm going to pick up my groceries i'll get yours so i did so i got you know whatever she wanted uh <laughs> I hand her a bag of groceries and like two minutes later, there's a knock at my door. Now, this is a woman who's stick thin, right? She doesn't look like she's eaten in years. Her house is literally falling apart. Her car is falling apart. 
and she hands me back the loaf of bread I got her, which was like not, it wasn't like a cheap, I got her like an or a wheat. Like there was no Dave's bread back then. So I got her like an or a wheat, multi-grain, whatever it was. And she's like, um, I'm gluten-free, so I'm going to give this back to you. And I was like, you've got to be kidding Another me. LA tale. Yeah. I was like, okay. And then um, during the pandemic, Mary used to always do this uh, thing where she would go to the food bank and then she would bring me food and our family food and put it on our front porch, which was very sweet. But she would get like industrial size, like bags, like um, like, like plastic bags of pudding, like a <laughs> huge plastic bag, like vacuum sealed of pudding. Um, but the expiration date would be like, like six months old, right? And so finally I had to tell her, like, I remember you came out one time and you were like, does she not think I have a job? <laughs> What's going on here? There'd be like canned peaches, canned green beans with all like, you know, old expiration days. So, um, yeah, I remember I had to tell her one time, Mary, I think we're good. We don't need any more food from the food bank. And she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm positive. I think she had been storing that stuff for a while before she realized, oh, I should give this away. Like she's, she got it from the food bank. True but it had actually been in her fridge for a couple years. Oh my God. Before she was like doling it out to all the neighbors. It wasn't all the neighbors, it was just me. Oh. Um, maybe. Nobody else, <laughs> nobody else opened the door. No, it was just bed. me, maybe. And you know what? Don't you think it was odd that the one day the house got robbed, Mary wasn't home? I think Mary did it. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> Oh my God! But no, She's really sus. No, I know she didn't. She was just a she was just a woman who had some. Yeah, I don't issues. think she had the skills. I don't think she did either. They yeah. were pretty stealthy. Although Al Qaeda was chasing her. Oh yeah, I remember that's true. Yeah, the one time James was coming home from the gym or something, and she had stopped you and said, "Al Qaeda is in my backyard," and then she brought you back there to show you where they broke no, in. No, she showed me photos on her flip phone. Oh, that's right. Of right. how she had like a wire thing that kept her gate shut, but now it was open. Yeah, and Al Qaeda was back yeah. there. Yeah. I don't know. Mary was cool though. She watched out for our kids. You think? Yeah, I mean, kind of. She yeah, at least knew when they were, you know, she wouldn't let them walk out on the street and stuff oh, like that. Oh, that's true. You know? She didn't do that. Yeah, but she certainly wasn't around when that house got robbed, which is so interesting. Well, pour some out. I Mary. Know. Mary's no Rest in with peace, us. Mary. Yeah. No. Anyway. But anyway, so small town pros and cons. I so think that has nothing. To, Mary in LA has nothing to do with small town. Yeah, kind of, because she was like in, in my business. She, did, she, she was, was in definitely every, okay. in my business. Right. What are you talking about? I, I see. Okay. She wasn't in your business because you were never home. She was no. in my business. Yeah. 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 I'm sure she was like, "Why is he coming home late?" Oh tonight? no! So Remember, she late thought you were night. a cop. Oh yeah, she did. She thought uh, no, because FBI. we bought FBI. our. FBI. She thought it was FBI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was weird. We did buy our house from a sheriff. Mm-hmm. Um, but she thought you were but FBI. I don't know how she made the leap to FBI. I don't either. Go, no, he's must have been that black infinity I was driving around. I have no <laughs> idea. Like circa 2005. Oh my God, I remember I was like, no, he's just an editor. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just another schlub working in television. Oh my God. I don't know. Look, whatever. I, you know me. It's like, I want to be part of a community. I want to be part of a small town. I've got nothing to hide. I've, I've said this for years. Like, pff, have at it. I have nothing to hide. Okay. You're going to get along with everybody? What happens if you don't get along with people? I know that's the problem because it's so small that if you don't get along with one person, like the queen bee of the society in that little area. That's it. You're on the you're out. out. You, you get two friends at that point. You get the two other exiles. I know. The mate, the friendship And part. one of them is going to be a Wiccan. <laughs> Getting along with everyone might be hard. <laughs> you better run for mayor right uh -huh, away so uh -huh. everybody has to like you. Hi listeners, thank you for stopping in on this week's episode. We're so happy you're here. I did want to mention something to you. With regards to this episode, I think it's really important for anyone who buys a new home in a new location to realize that if they're going to start an at-home business, they can keep their home address and their business address separate. How do you do that? You do that with a virtual mailbox. James and I use Anytime Mailbox for all of our mailing needs and we love it. If you are going to start an at-home business and want to keep the business and the home separate, get a virtual mailbox. It's perfect. You can go to our website, skiptownallstars.com and click on the link, Anytime Mailbox, to learn more about a virtual mailbox. 
And if you click on that link, you get a 10% discount. Anytime Mailbox is happy to offer a discount to all of our listeners that are interested in a virtual mailbox. Now, back to the show. It sound right, boy. So jumping back to Litchfield, let's talk about some of the things that you mentioned that they do uh, in the green, in downtown, uh, <laughs> and a few of the things that Sean rattled off to me on the phone was a 4th of July pet parade around the green. Sounds cool. Uh -huh. Bring your iguana. Uh, Litchfield Hills Road Race is the second Sunday in every June. I guess it's a really popular event. Like drag racing? I think it's more like um, people get to run in the street. Oh, okay. It's I a little think. different. I think you're right. I, don't I think, think it's drag racing. I think it's, you're right. You're it right. It just sounds dangerous around those like <laughs> 1700s buildings, you know? I think road racing. It's a bad idea. Yeah. Drag racing in a colonial town. Okay. It's not a fit. Uh, every autumn, there is a Scarecrows in the Meadow where, you know, they award prizes for the best Scarecrows. Oh, awesome. I actually saw the Scarecrows that won. And I have to tell you, we were in Guilford. When we were in Guilford, there were some Scarecrows there. There were, for um, sure. These ones in Litchfield, they're way better. Oh. Like, not even close. Well, they do have a contest. So, you know, like, I think people are going to bring There's it. There's a lot more artistry. Yeah. Are they scary? Uh, they did look scary. They look cool. They look like uh, the Tim Burton type oh, scarecrow that very you would cool. imagine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, as you said, they have a summer concert series. Uh, the big attraction for at least me personally is the nature around there. Um, Litchfield yeah. Land Trust actively acquires land for preservation. Some you can use, some you can't. There are tons of trails all over this area. Uh, there's a White Memorial Conservation Foundation that oversees about 40 miles of trails just in this little town, 40 miles. Wow. How about that's that? That's amazing. That's very impressive. That's right. Get your hiking on. Uh, so if you just want to get out of the house, you can also go do the Litchfield Greenway. I think that's just a few miles long, but they actually have a video on the website for the town and um, it looks cool. It's nice. I mean, it is kind of nice. The one thing I really liked about Litchfield, and it goes back to the drive there, um, is that they, all of their corporate stores and their strip malls are really in the Torrington area, and they've left Litchfield untouched in, in that fashion. So it really, like, the aesthetics are so pretty, just yeah. very pretty. They've done a great job of not letting Dollar General come in there. 100%. And crap up the scenery. Yeah. So, uh that's great. Um, as we said, uh, lots of hiking. Mm -hmm. Just watch out for ticks, right? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Yes. Connecticut and the ticks. Bantam Lake is the big attraction around there, though. Yeah. Bantam Lake is the place. You and I drove around it's it. It's beautiful. Saw all of the... Oh, my God. Houses the, I, on you know, the lake. I, whenever I say lake, I think of cottages because that's where I grew up. These are not cottages. These are like... Nope. These houses were incredible. Yeah. With um, like boats. Cabins. Yes. All that. Like yes. Big sort of uh, upscale cabins, right? Yes. That's the best way to put so it. So when you picture like in your mind a postcard of a beautiful lake with like, just think of um, beautiful historical colonial homes with boats. Mm -hmm. That's this lake. Yeah. Uh, and Bantam Lake is the largest natural lake in Connecticut. We've talked about Candlewood Lake yeah. in the past. That is a man-made lake. It has a dam. So uh, the largest natural lake in Connecticut, and it's kind of like up in the hills. Like it's it, like this region yeah, is sort of an extension of the Appalachian Mountains. A uh, lot of hills, a lot of rocky, uh, yep. you know, mountains to climb up and everything. I did not know it was the first largest. Is that what you said? The is, first largest? What did you say? What's well, the largest natural? Natural. Okay, the yeah. largest natural. Like okay. God made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know what natural means. Thank you. Okay, cool. Well, when <laughs> it freezes over, I know you would be excited for this. Uh, I guess there are a lot of people that do ice sailing on Bantam Lake. Have you ever heard of this? No. It's basically like skiffs with an actual wind sail. And they, <laughs> they sail. Uh -huh. they, they're basically boat skating yes. across the yes. lake the um i would be so afraid that it's going to crack wait till you hear this connecticut ice yacht club has these boats they can get up to 80 miles per hour 80 miles per hour just you and your little 
Who that goes sled fast. with a sail on it. Be, you know, that it's seems like dangerous. just sled beneath your feet. It's insane. That seems dangerous. I watched some of the videos on YouTube. It was like I cannot believe people do this and don't like they die. still come home. Yeah, they don't die. It's so crazy. Because um, you know you're going 80 miles an hour, you fall on that ice and crack your head open. Yeah, it's over. Oh, well, how mean, about like you're gonna? T it's ice. You're gonna tumble for like 200 <sighs> yards. I just think like the ice will break. What if the ice breaks? And well, then no. you go if down. You, if you can sail on it, then your weight is not going to be enough to, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't think you're, if you put an entire boat and stand on the boat and sail across this thing, falling down is not going to be enough weight. That's you without the boat. No, I'm thinking though, not you cracking the ice and making a, you know, it break open. I'm just saying like sometimes people get on the, these lakes and they think they're safe. They're going to go ice skating. And oh. All of a sudden, next thing you know, you're in the water. Yeah. I'm sure it's happened. Yeah. Oh, I bet you it has. There's got to be some sort oh, of I'm governing sure. body that says you cannot <laughs> ice sail today. I don't know. I would hope. Anyway, um, there's also a ski resort nearby called Mount Lake Ridge. It's actually a private community. It's a private ski resort. Get out of here. How bougie is that? Holy cow. Uh -huh. A private ski resort? Yeah. Yep. Oh, that is bougie. How do so, you spell it? Never a line for the ski lift, I bet. Uh, yeah. Mount Lake Ridge, all one word. Lake okay. Ridge, to, all one word. I need, to, I need to dive deeper into this. I want to know yeah. how much it costs to be a member. I, I started looking around on their website. I could not it's find vague. it. Well, there's not, there was, first off, there's nothing for sale. And second off, I couldn't find any prices whatsoever. I, I did not go to any of the homes.com. So the Zillow only websites. way to be a member is to live in the community. Yes. So it's a gated community. And I'm sure there's an Holy add-on for you if you want to use a ski So like where and... some people have a community pool, they have a <clears throat> community mountain. They have a, yes. Oh. They have a community slope with its own ski lift. Wow. Uh, which speaks to, uh, there's a wave of people from New York. Uh, that have moved there, especially since the pandemic. I guess they've been coming in and out, actually. That's inaccurate. They, there have been tons of people from New York who have chosen that area around Litchfield okay. to have second homes, and, and that's been happening for a long time. They have a long legacy of part-time residents. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know. That's kind of, uh, you know, the Litchfield Inn has just recently opened up, I guess. It was closed for a while. So you can go there and stay. Uh, uh, the um, I remember when we were there, it wasn't open. No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And Because uh, I wanted to spend the night. Remember, I was like, let's, let's like. Yeah, let's just hang and yeah. not drive through the black ice back home in the mm -hmm. dark. Exactly. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. But it's open now. I think it opened in April or something like that. Uh, it's been hosting visitors for over 200 years. Oh, Not as wow. long as the Grizz, but but it did open in 1799. Got it. So, uh, and then uh, the Litchfield Courthouse is also being, the one you mentioned, yeah. is also being transformed into a hotel. Oh, With the hopes really? of opening this so summer. Pretty. I don't know if it's open yet. Wow. But, um, you know, there'll be more places to stay. People can hang in Litchfield and, you know. I was actually really excited to visit. Like when her, when Ellie's friend from college had mentioned that we should go, uh, I, I was all gung ho about it because when I looked it up and did a little research, I was like, oh, ooh, this is like a teeny tiny Connecticut town. <clears throat> and it is a teeny tiny Connecticut town. It is a teeny tiny town. But if I haven't done a great job of selling it to you so far, let me just add on two quick points. And that is Litchfield has its own unique pickled fruit and vegetable relish known as Litchfield Pickles. Mm -hmm. And Litchfield supplies most of the milk for Connecticut's artisanal cheese industry. Oh. Artisanal cheese. Wow. Fancy ass cheese. That is really fancy. Yeah. yeah. That means a cheese maker actually made it. It's not like... An assembly line cheese. Yep. So crafted cheese. It was a cheese good day in Litchfield. It was an even better day researching all the crazy stuff that's happened in Litchfield. And I cannot thank Sean Kunick at the Litchfield Historical Society enough for spending all the time with me. He did. You can check out their page at litchfieldhistoricalsociety.org. Bam. Um, well, could you live there? I could totally live there. Could you okay, live there? You say that about every place. Like, I'm oh, no, serious I like that we now. actually like, look at the house there. I know, but could no, you like really, the... for real? Yeah, I like Okay, it. you know you can't. You actually cannot live could there. Could you live there? No. 
Why? It's too small and it's in the middle of nowhere. You got Torrington. You can no. go to Target in Torrington. No, no that's not like... It's Chipotle no. right down the street. <laughs> you say yes to everything. I know for a fact you cannot live there, so stop it. You I need to be honest. You, you can live anywhere. There's a place Then why we are we to... doing this show? Because you can live literally Look, every place we go. We I, have, I can live I there. I have everything I need. There's a place called Toast and Company. We had breakfast there. The coffee was amazing. I'm good. A little bit of snow, a little bit of coffee, a lot of Litchfield. Okay, well, there's not a lot of Litchfield, but there's enough Litchfield to certainly keep me, uh, you know, occupied. You're so impressionable. You can live everywhere. It's a nice town. Those houses are nice. They look colonial. Okay. I felt like Ethan Allen. <laughs> you felt like Ethan Allen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I was all like, right. We need some good colonial furniture up in this. All right, I think that's it for Litchfield. He can live there, I cannot. That's a wrap, I guess. We're done with Litchfield, huh? I think so. But I know you can't live there. You're just saying it. Like, you say every place you can live. I like Litchfield. It's very cute. Could I live there? Hmm. I could live near Bantam Lake. I know that. Okay, well, that's... I mean, I can't afford it, but I could live there. All right. Now you're backtracking. I am backtracking a little bit. <laughs> Empty nest, full tank. See you guys next week. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.